Gentlemen, it's time to reach back into your closet and dust off those loafers, or better yet, buy some of the many new styles hitting stores for fall. Joining us now with some show and tell to discuss the rise of the loafer is WSJ style reporter Ray Smith. Ray, great to see you. Thanks Good for you. bringing all these shoes with you. The sure, loafer thanks. certainly has a long history in yes. American menswear, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It goes back to the 30s, actually, with uh, G.H. Bass and Company, which introduced the uh, regions that yeah. are, became popular among preppies and even JFK yes, we throughout remember. the 50s and 60s. So it was considered very stylish. Then it sort of went through a period where it was a little derided, as a little too preppy, a little too staid, perhaps, by yes. the younger set anyway. Is that exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then there are, of course, those men who never stopped wearing them, who still wear them today. But for the younger guy, why are they embracing it now? Why is now the moment of the loafer? Sure. Um, part of it is this whole sort of smart, casual look that even workplaces that don't require you wear suits anymore, uh, a loafer is a, a perfectly acceptable shoe. It fits right in. Right. But also the rise of Gucci, when Gucci sort of came out with their um, interpretations of the loafer, especially so the fur-lined ones. Right? Yeah, they were yeah. on fire. Exactly. So high fashion is taking note, and yes. are celebrities also taking note? Yes, definitely. Definitely. We've seen that with um, celebrities ranging from LeBron James to Ryan Gosling to even uh, Matt Lauer, who yes. got sort of uh, massacred on Twitter for wearing loafers with no socks. <laughs> Which is something we'll get into. It's exactly. a very important issue. Yeah. But let's talk a little bit about the different styles out there, a little loafer primer. Sure. Now, is the loafer in general is considered less formal than an Oxford, correct? Yes, it is. So what is the most formal version of the loafer? Sure. A loafer with tassels, like uh, this by um, Edward Green, which is sold to Burton of Goodman. Um, or this one um, from Magnani, a brand called Magnani. Those with the tassels are considered dressier than the other kinds of loafers. So could this replace an Oxford in almost all occasions or not quite? I mean, obviously you wouldn't get married in these, but, <laughs> <laughs> but in other than a wedding? Yeah, in, in fact, in, in Wall Street in the 70s and 80s, a lot of investment bankers would wear tassel loafers with their suits. So, so they're definitely... So you can get away yes. with it. Right? It may not quite be black tie just yet, but, right. <laughs> but exactly. the rate we're going. And then, of course, this is the classic, right? The this classic. is the classic Bass Weegeons, and, um, and these are the, the perennial penny loafers, um, and people would actually sometimes put coins in them, um, whether for fashion sake or for practical reasons, so that's the classic. That's the classic, and then of course there's the horse bit that people like to use as a driving shoe, is that right? Well, you know, the, the horse bit loafers, which um, refers to this detail, which mm -hmm. resembles a horse's bit, and Gucci popularized those with their loafer. Uh, this is a Ferragamo style, but it's also a driving loafer, so it combines two of the loafer trends. And these are very comfortable. Are these considered super cash? These are considered casual, and their, their original intent was actually for driving so that your your um, heel wouldn't catch along the, the, the pedal. I see, so, yeah. I see. And then, of course, this is the high fashion version that had Everybody so excited, right? This is a Fendi loafer <laughs> with a fur, and it also has, um, I don't know if you can see this detail, but it collapses in the back, so if you want to wear it almost like a clog, it's um, like a house slipper. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can show up to the boardroom in that, though. <laughs> oh, right, exactly, exactly. Unless it's casual Friday, maybe. And that's an um, expensive shoe. This is, they're all pr a pretty penny, to yeah. be honest. Um, yeah. um, and then this is, these are also just high fashion interpretations of... Um, of the loafer, like right. this is a style from, that looks like almost like a wingtip shoe in terms of the profile, but this is Paul Andrews' take on the loafer. So it's got a little bit of a thicker sole. Exactly, yeah, yeah. I really like the ones on your end though that are sure. a little sleeker. These are sleeker. And a little bit sort of more subtle. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, I really yeah. like those. This is a Paul Stewart with a low vamp, mm -hmm. and so that's one of the, um, also one of the hallmarks of some penny loafers. Loafers differ in terms of where the vamp is and what, how much foot you're showing and exposing. Right. And of course, that that is crucial to our next question, <laughs> which is to wear a sock or to not wear a sock. I feel like this question has been asked since the preppy handbook <laughs> came out in the 80s. I mean, yes. it had pride of place on the cover. <laughs> pride of place on the cover. Um, I, you know, it's funny that you say that. I, I, I think it's smart to wear it without a sock in the summertime or in the spring. Um, and if you're concerned about whether it's perspiration or odor, you can get a low show sock or a no show sock. I know there are a lot of people though that don't like that look, like not just men wearing them, but people who see men wearing them get creeped out by the thought, and, but and it's... Matt Lauer apparently Matt, yeah. gets some flack for it. Yeah, but the truth is, it, it's, a, it's a comfortable shoe, especially in the summer, and, and it makes sense to go sockless with it. Now, if you feel like you do need a sock and you can't stand the sort of no sock look because you feel like it's going to slip into your foot, 
Can you wear socks? You, yeah, you can totally wear socks. Yeah, and some people use the loafer as an opportunity to show off their sock game. Right, um, right. So that's Good another. Point. Yes. Good point. Now, what else does the sort of young man who wants to try a loafer need to take into consideration <laughs> besides getting past sort of some of the the stuffy background? Sure, sure. The stuffy background is a big thing, um, but you know they are considered an essential shoe. Like Mr. Porter sort of names them as an essential shoe, for yes. instance. And the thing is that you have to think about. Your it pant doesn't leg. your pant leg. You right. can't right exactly. So you have to think about the hem and where it's going to fall, the pant break and where it's going to fall. Because it's not the same as with an Oxford. Exactly. It has a lower profile and and plus it's a broader shoe. So right. you've got you really got to think about where the pant break is so it doesn't pull over the loafer. All right. So you got to take your socks and your pants into consideration <laughs> and up your loafer game. Yeah. All right, Ray Smith. Thank you so much for that. Thank you.